want to just, for starters, um, your remarks on the game and congratulations. Thank you very much. <clears throat> First, I must, uh, I must commend the good work that Eric is doing at Cape Town City. I think he less is said about the positive stories that one sees as a coach. I think he has introduced a lot of youngsters who are really doing very well. And his team plays, in my opinion, the best football in the league. Uh, very, very good speed of play, good movements of the ball, a lot of mobility. And I, I felt it's, it's important for me to, to comment this good work because sometimes when you did not win, it looks like you did not do anything. But the truth is, I think they they are playing some of the best football, and I like to watch their team. And I I think I watched five of their matches because they were exciting to watch. I must I must say. Uh, coming to the match, I think we, we started the game very well. Uh, good energy, good intensity, good ball speed, uh, and I think we our build-ups were very spot on. And we created good opportunities from most of those situations. And it was pleasing to see the team giving a reaction like this because that's what we expected. Uh, in as much as we scored three, and I'm happy with three, but I still maintain that I think we could have scored more. And when I look at the chances that we got, I think we, we could have done even better. But nonetheless, one should appreciate the fact that from a defeat we've managed to to win against what I believe is, is one of the best teams in the league. Thank you, Coach. Questions from the floor. Coach, um, I think the obvious one is Peter scoring two goals today. Just how important is it for your season to have a fit and firing Peter Sharonili? I think everybody within the club, uh, even the Yellow Nation, I'm sure everybody is excited to see him going back into his scoring ways because we know when he's on the roll, he can really, really help us uh, this season. And that's why we kept the faith. We've been giving him opportunities after opportunities because we we did believe that he will he will one day come back and, and, and give us what we want. And I'm very happy that today he came in and really delivered. We wanted him fresh for this match which is why we did not even want to play him against Polowane City, but we were forced to bring him in the last minutes. And I was very impressed to see him uh, playing the way he played. I think in many moments, he was very important uh, to, to our attack. <coughs> Coach, uh, Tsapang from Sokala Duma. Just two questions from my side. Um, Ribeiro, uh, such an important player for Sundowns. Um, but is there a concern from your side in terms of the cards that he's picking up? I think he was suspended last game. Today he picked up another yellow card. Is there something you'd also want to address because that means you might miss him in some of these key games during the season? And then Kodi Sang as well. He's been here now for I think, two months or so, if, if not more, I'm not, if I'm not mistaken. Um, how has he been able to adapt? He's returned to the PSL, he was away for some time. How has he been able to adapt uh, in also trying to fight for his place in the team? Yeah, starting with Lucas, I say it's a big concern for all of us uh, that uh, he somehow finds a way to get a booking, <laughs> even when even when it was difficult for him to get a booking because the tackle that he made just on the line was very unnecessary. and. Uh, but sometimes you must know when you are working with South Americans, they they think differently, and they give everything to the game, uh, which sometimes exposes them to to such questions. Yes, we are concerned, and we've had I personally had maybe three or four one on ones with him because I really want him to to understand, and I think he has improved in some instances because he. He was very emotional before, but I think he's really improving now because it could have been easy for, for referees to always take him out. And uh, I'm seeing good progress, but uh, still there's still a lot of work to do. I think even other members of the club are trying their best to help us with uh, players like Lucas because we, we, we know how important they are. And it hurts us when they are not in the team because of... Cautions that maybe were not very necessary. 
uh, <clears throat> Cody Sang, I think he's adapting quite well. Uh, it's just that it's it's a very difficult environment. This uh, when he gets the few opportunities that he got, I was happy with him. He gave him a chance against Babani who scored and he had an assist. He gave him a chance against Polo One, which I think he also played quite well. And I think he's very close to to really maybe establishing himself within the PSL. He's a very good football player. We we brought him because we know what he's capable of. Uh, but it's just that he, it, it's quite it's quite tough. Uh, our environment is not very easy for for players to break in, and it's worse when you are playing these official matches that are challenging so much. But I'm very hopeful he's going to get an opportunity soon and and uh, stamp his authority because the good thing now he's finding himself in and around the 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 match day squad which which is very good and i i'm optimistic he's going to to help us as the season progresses he's got a lot of good attributes as a player and we are hoping that those attributes can help us when when we need them the most <coughs> uh, evening coach uh coach um when you're when you're coaching a big team there's a lot of moving parts to manage and uh, for example, like when you lose a game um, on the weekend, it, it it takes away like from the small positive things that are happening on the side. Well, so a good example today is Neil Mayama. Um, he had a very good game today, um, and I saw at times the shape was like a diamond shape, and it took me back to the season where like he started like a house on fire at Sundowns. Um, are those like small tweaks, things that you you want to 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 do to help players like Neil? Or players like, like Peter, who also thrived when he was playing with Kemet, playing with Gift, and today was playing with Reynas up front. Are those the small tweaks that you're trying to, to help the, the guys who did well, but they did the for a bit? Uh, I, I think you, you, you do have a point, uh, which is why I, I chose to play the 4 3 3, because I felt we've got a lot of players that are suited for a 4-3-3 formation because uh, the, the only difference between a 4-3-3 and a diamond is, is the head on top, whether you decide to, to play with a nine in between the, the, the center backs or you are deciding to play with your nines in the half spaces in between the full back and the center back. And uh, today the reason, the reason for that was because we wanted to have an overload in the midfield because their midfield three is very good. So we had to make sure that we always have a plus one in the midfield to make sure that we we give ourselves a chance to to have better control, so that the game is not uh, a transitional game. Because if it was like that, we were not going to win the match. They are very good in that game, and uh, most teams will always struggle with that three. And I think Hashim has become very important for them, and Amato is is one of the best players that I I enjoy watching. I don't want to lie. Uh, <coughs> then. Players like Rhodes, I think they wanted to to reserve them for the for the cup match over the weekend. Uh, but the truth of the matter is, the system that we are playing is because we've got a lot of players that can can benefit from the type of of a system that we are playing. And for as for Neo, I think his injury is probably one thing that has taken him out for long. Not not his not his performance. I think. We all know what he's capable of, but unfortunately, he's been getting an injury after injury, and it was worse when he came from a very long layoff. Then he had a freak uh, injury where he, he had a cut just on, on on the ankle in front, and it was we thought it's a small thing, and it took for long because every time you, it walks, it would open and close like that, and it, the doctors tried to stitch it. And it really, really took long. And I'm not sure even now whether it has fully, fully healed. But I was impressed to see him coming back again because that left foot in the midfield is, is always going to be very important for us. Coach, can I ask you about Rivaldo? Um, he seems to be a man who just has no luck. Yeah, I, I wouldn't want to talk about the, the injuries as such, uh, but it, it was just unfortunate, you know. And the sad part is, I had said to him, I don't want to use him in this match. That is what he's had on me. 
because I, I really did not want to, to use him in this match up until a point where Obas was fouled. Then I said, Ish, I don't want uh, to also lose Obas. It's the last few minutes. Maybe River must just have some minutes uh, as an activation towards towards the next match. And unfortunately, got that freak injury that I, I just don't understand at the moment. Maybe after I've seen the footage, I'll be able to to, to comment about it. But it was just unfortunate, and I I agree with you, man. I think he, he just does not have luck because this year. I think it was probably his first season where I've seen him playing so many matches in a row without any injury and being able to sustain himself because he's been training a lot uh, in the club with Peter, which has helped him to be stronger physically and to manage to, to play game after game after game after game. Rivaldo is not, is not somebody like that, but again now we've got this setback, but let me just hope it's not something serious. the way they did uh, comparing to the previous seasons um, do you think that it's going to um, unveil the way it has been implemented for the past five seasons? How has it been happening in the last few seasons? Maybe if you can just lead me there. I wouldn't say it was easy uh, coach, but now you've never seen a team like Orlando Paddy starting the way they've started you know? and then also to open the season <clears throat> now, to, to be honest, I think we, in the, in the first five, six matches of the season, it's always very close to what is happening. Man. And I've seen in one season, Arrows was number one. And I've, seen, I've seen different things in, in, in the PSL in the first ten matches. And uh, it will be nice to see how this season is going to pan out. But one thing I can I can guarantee you, it is impressive to see so many teams putting a very good fight. Uh, it's impressive what what you see at Polowane City, what you see at Stellenbosch, what you see it at uh, at Marquesi. Uh, when you see so many teams being competitive against uh, the big teams, that it, for me it's it's a plus on our preparation for the Champions League. Because you, you would want to play a tough match every week in order to be sure that you will always be at a, at a very good level for the Champions League. So for me, it is impressive to see so many teams uh, doing the way they are doing. And honestly speaking, I, 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 I applaud the work that the coaches and the clubs are doing to try and and push to maybe to <laughs> to make life difficult for everybody else in the league. Let me put it like that. I really like that I because that I know it will help us all going forward. Ourselves and Orlando Pirates were in the Champions League. So when we're playing tough matches every week locally, that has a big advantage in, in getting us sharper and I always had this 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 talk that because in the in the league you would play against teams that really do not put stress on our last line. We would go into the Champions League not knowing how strong we are defensively, because almost everybody else is 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 giving us a lot of respect and they are they are they are sitting in and they are never really challenging us. But when you see most of these wingers that we play against from all these teams now, it really, really encourages me because I look at the triangle on the side of uh, of Cape, Cape Town City where they will use a fullback, an eight, and a winger. That is what you get in the Champions League because in the Champions League they are playing mainly wing play to put the ball in the box. And you want to be challenged uh, locally to be able to, to, to match the level in the Champions League. And I... For me, this is this is very good for all of us. And as to what happens at the end, I think that one will determine itself. Two, two last questions. So on that theme, Coach, um, how um, 
you're going to be playing an international window and then you're straight into the Champions League. I think the cup final may be, may be the weekend before, but how, how does that mess your plans up for this? Yeah, that one is, is, is very difficult for us. But I think since we, we had a meeting with, with uh, the national team coach, I think it's, it will help a little bit because we'll be able to talk around these issues because sometimes if it's a friendly match that the national team is playing, we might request that hey, for friendly matches we, we should not, if it's a qualifier and we have already qualified for instance, we can always try to, to talk because at least that window of talking and, and sharing our ideas and thoughts, I think it's going to help all of us. But the truth is, it's, it's always very difficult. Because if you look at uh, the, the Arrows game that we played, uh, Culling Cup, again, it was just immediately after the window, the, the, the FIFA break. And it causes a lot of problems when you've got a lot of players who have traveled and now you must try to use the players that have been around a lot. Unfortunately, we used them in that game and they, they won the game very well. And we took the same squad and we took it to Polowani hoping for another five. And we could not even get a shot at goal. <laughs> you know, that's football for you. Personal, I prefer to chase. Personal, uh, because you always have a target, and we've always been that target for far too long. But when you when when you are when you are there, you must never sleep up. So I think it's it's it will be better to chase. It will be better to chase. Thank you, coach. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.